Hey guys, welcome to Order 66 TV. Today I'm going to take you through a very simple tutorial to get yourselves playing on the Game of Thrones modification for Crusader Kings 2. Now a lot of people look at this game and they see it and think, wow that looks so complicated. And then they actually download it, check it out and they think, god this is horrendously complicated. And yeah, it is to start with, but it, it can also be very very easy as well and as soon as you get uh, to grips with the game it's absolutely fantastic so for the, just the rest of this video then i'm just going to be taking you through a few key things i do and a few of what the menus do etc just to get you up to speed with anything and of course if anybody needs any extra tutorials comment onto the channel let us know and i'll make them no problem for you so to start with then guys i suggest you don't go start in as a king or a lord paramount or something like that we're going to start with uh, the mandalas in the north so to start this, <coughs> we're going to go with uh, the War of Conquest, which is just up here on the left. And if we just click around here, look for White Harbour, so it's this area here. So you, first of all, it comes up as King Torren of the North, so Torren Stark. But we want to click it again, and that takes us to, his, to the person who actually owns this bit of territory, because the Starks own all of the North together, but then each one of these little territories is divided into what's called a vassal. So... Every, every, so like a different person owns every single one of these little squares here. So for instance, we click there and that's the Hornwoods. So Lord Torren of Hornwood. We click there and it's the Boltons. So many of you who watch the shows and read the book will know who the Boltons are. And if you click uh, Greywater Watch there, it's the Reeds. So these are, what's, these are what's basically known as playing as a minor lord. So today, as I say, we're going to play as uh, the Mandalas. So Lord Willem of White Harbour. So all I need to do is make sure his portrait's playing there. Because if you just clicked it once and you've got to start, you'll basically end up playing as King King Torren of the North. So just click it till, Ma till Wyman, uh, Willem Mandley comes up. And all you need to do then is go and press play. So this really is a great mod. And I really don't want people to miss out on it just because they think it's a little bit complicated. Because it, it genuinely isn't. Once you get used to it, you can literally have days. I've lost days to this game because it's so good. Okay, so this is the screen you presented with when you first start. <clears throat> so you've got your character portrait in the top left. These are basically decisions, really, that affect you during the game. This is the mini-map down here. So it's normal map, map navigation, scroll wheel to roll out, and just move around with your arrow keys. And it's a fantastic map, and <laughs> it does look quite daunting to start with. Um, so let's go back, zoom back in of where we are. So this is our little shield here. So we are White Harbour, okay? So we're playing as Lord Willem of White Harbour. Now, don't worry about these menus too much, but if we click from the Terran menu and go to Independent Realms, we'll notice that the North is an independent realm, okay? And it's covered in white. So we are part of this. Now, the big symbol in the middle, which is Winterfell, where the Starks live, that is basically who we owe <coughs> allegiance to, if you like. So if the, the Starks call a war or demand money, etc., we generally have to support them unless you want to rebel. So when the Starks call a war or go to war with, say, the Iron Throne, the Starks will call a war and all these little territories here will declare for the Starks and send armies. They'll have their own armies, but they'll also send uh, men to the Starks. So you're basically an ally more than anything, but they, you, own, you owe them more allegiance than anything else. And as you can see, the, particularly where we've started the War of Conquest, you can see it's divided up into... The Iron Throne isn't made at this time. A, uh, the Targaryens are still on Dragonstone. Haven't actually conquered Westeros yet. So all we're going to do now is go back from the Independent Realms to the Terran button. And we're going to go make our way up to this menu at the top here. And the first button we're going to come across is the Council. Okay, So this is the, your Council who does everything for you. So you've got a Castellan, Master of Laws, Master of Arms, Master of Coin, Master of Whisperers, a Maester and a Septon. Okay, so you can appoint new ones if you'd like, but I recommend just leaving the recommended ones for you to start with. And we have different options within the council buttons, okay? So your Castellan can oversee the province, improve the defences, pacify the province, or improve the holding. So improve the holding basically means improve your castle. So for this one, I like to improve defences, okay? So all you need to do is click improve defences once, and it'll bring this new section of map up for you. And where it's green, because that's where I own, I can improve defenses there. So I just single click with my left mouse button and that's done for me. So I then work my way down to the Master of Laws. So he can improve diplomatic relations with other states. 
he can fabricate a claim on that state, which basically means if I wanted to take, say, the Dreadfort from the Boltons, I'd use the Fabricate Claim like this. I'd then click it on the Dreadfort, and eventually I'll have a claim on that, and I can go to war with them to take it. But for this, I don't want to do that. You can also sow Descent, which basically unstabilizes a... Uh, <clears throat> A territory but for this what I'm going to do I'm going to improve diplomatic relations okay so I've clicked it once and I'm going to click it onto Winterfell because I want the Stark to absolutely love me so I've done that so now I've got down to master at arms this is the guy that really looks after your combat so he can suppress revolts so you don't get any river bones in your uh, territory he can train troops for you which gives you an extra 20 plus 25 percent troops which is actually really good or he can train train your children for you so for this I'm going to click train troops and again, I'm going to go back to White Harbor and just single click left there. Again, moving on to the Master of Coin. He can collect taxes, which puts 30% uh, extra income for you, which is pretty good. Or he can oversee construction. So if you've got a big construction project going, like a new castle level or something like that, he can make it faster for you. But for this, simply to start with, I'm just going to collect taxes. And again, just clicking on White Harbor. Okay, so the Master of Whisperers, he can scheme build a spy network or sabotage an economy so basically again to stabilize in another state so i think i'm going to build a spy network for this and because i'm a little gremlin i'm going to do it uh, uh harren hall right there so i've just clicked on the territory i want to build a spy network in so i'll start knowing things that are going on in here my maester has no options at all he basically just looks after your children and advises you occasionally so we just leave him as he is and for the septon you can perform charity or proselytize, which means basically convert a region to your religious beliefs. So don't worry too much about religious beliefs at the moment. You will pick those up. It's different, obviously, in the game. The Starks follow the old gods, but actually the Mandalas, who we're playing as, follow the gods of the Seven. So it gets a little bit complicated on that, but don't worry about it. It doesn't affect the game at all. So I'm going to just click perform charity for this. So all I'm giving is charity to basically local people which makes them like me better so that is the council taken care of okay so as we go through the game our council members will die and we'll need to appoint better people and we can change them to do different things as the need arises okay so the next menu across is laws now don't worry about the laws at all but in in this menu we can change from different um succession laws so we can have a female here a male heir, a split um a system where basically each child receives something else and we can also in this menu mess around with how many men we can call upon how much tax we can have so just leave it as it is to start with you won't you don't get any benefit really of doing anything now you'll notice the technological menu is grayed out that's because they've disabled it in the mod because it doesn't really add anything to it at all so the next tab along is the military okay so as we can see here we've got a little drop down list and as I was talking about before where we are a vassal to the Starks well these people here are actually vassals to us so these are the people who own little like towers I guess around our territory and they have small amounts of troops so like 194 224 and basically when we when we go to war we can call on these guys here and to raise our armies if we wanted to we click there and there and as you'll notice, White Harbour's army there has come for 3,183. So that's our main army. And in these outlying territories, are really small, sort of like small holdings, who have some minor lords who are allied to us, they've also raised their armies as well, and we have control of them. Okay, so we're not going to do anything military now. So we're just going to drop. So we're going to left mouse click and uh, drag, select them all, which will bring up our army menu. And we're just going to press this little red arrow button here, which disables our troops stands them down again okay because we don't need them at the moment so that's the vassals menu okay so if we go to the mercenaries these are mercenary companies we can mercenary companies sorry we can hire or we can hire some hedge knights uh, some ironborn raiders the self sword infantry okay so you need 150 gold okay which is just there and a monthly cost of three gold 60 as you can see at the top corner our gold is only 63 so we can't hire any mercenary bands or anything at the moment 
and then we go on to holy orders so the warriors sons and the poor fellows these are basically um religious religious knights if you like and we need piety to hire these okay so that's 82.5 piety there with a 3.65 gold cost a month we go to our piety and we are pretty law-breaking rebels at the moment so we've only got 15. so again we can't hire them just yet but they bring in sort of like these guys the poor fellows would bring you 4060 troops so really worthwhile getting if you could okay so we're going to leave the military menu then for a bit and go on to intrigue okay intrigue is where a lot of things can happen, uh, a lot of random events, you can pl uh, plot against people, um, yeah, so you can imprison people, it's quite a uh, in-depth menu again, but I wouldn't worry about it too much, it doesn't affect the game too much to start with, and also we'll see decisions here, down this, this uh, list, so we've got everything really from holding a feast, to a grand hunt, to asking for a loan, to uh, establishing a household guard, employing a new uh, knight, and there's also little ones as well, like show me the owners of Valerian Blades, show me who has dragons at the moment, show me who's won tournament medals, show show who your friends and your rivals are. So again, don't worry about that too much at the moment. For now, what I'm going to do is just establish a household guard, just so you see how it works. So this is, this is the decision, establish a household guard. You click on the little piece of parchment with a green tick. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll be able to read what you lose and what you gain from it. So for this, I'm going to lose 50 gold. City tax is going to go down by 10%, castle tax by 10%, and temple tax by 10%. However, I'm going to gain 80, 80 infantry and 10 heavy cavalry, okay? And I get a household guard for permanent. It makes me harder to kill, makes the city harder to siege, etc. So we're going to go ahead and click this piece of parchment now with the green, single click. Okay. So fantastic. We've now got a household guard. Okay, guys, the next menu we're going to look at is factions, okay? So the factions is basically groups getting together who are demanding something so we can for instance start a faction in the north so if we click start faction we can demand independence from the starks we can demand to depose the king we can demand well we can basically become part of the crown loyalists so we're loyal to king stark we can demand that the the crown authority is lowered in the north so for, for to start us what we're going to do is we're going to start the crown loyalists because okay? so i want to show you how this works so we click to start that I'm the leader now of the Crown Loyalist Party, okay? And it says members here, and when we actually click from the, to start the game from the pause menu, states around us will join who are loyal to the Starks. And if anything happens to the Starks at this point, we'll become active as a party and defend them, okay? So religion as well is the final thing. I don't want you to even worry about that, okay? So we're just gonna go skip straight past that menu. So that's all there is to those menus there. There's nothing too complicated there at all. So now we're gonna go to these little bits on the top, okay? So one is the first one is ruler unmarried so we're going to click that and this brings up my character screen okay now i think my what yes okay so here look this shows my wife who i was married to but it also shows she died a natural death seven nine eight nine at age 37 okay so that gives me the option now of the arranged marriage okay which is just here so if i click this okay this brings up all these suitable women in the cat in like the land who i can marry with okay so marrying is a big part of this um big part of this game if you notice the little blue flag here, right? This is what alliance you will gain with marrying somebody, okay? So if I marry Elenya, a courtier in Craycall, I will gain an alliance with Lord Lyle of Craycall, right? So I can go and check out Craycall, see how big that is, and see if I think to myself, yep, yeah, he's a Western man, that's a good alliance for me. If I ever get in trouble, I can call on their help for this. But I think, okay, I might actually look for a Northman or something. So there's Rachel, the Master of Laws uh, for the Boltons. And I do get an alliance with Lord Rodwell of the Dreadfall for that. So for this, I'm going to click her. Okay. I'm going to then right click her. Okay, I'm going to click Arrange Marriage. Okay, which should already be highlighted for you. It says yes here because it's likely that their Lord will accept. And then I'm going to press Send on that, okay. So that has sent a marriage a proposal to the Boltons. And when we click to actually start the game, they will get that. The next thing we're going to do is just go back to our character page again. And we're going to check out the next bit on the side of this. And it's an unlanded son. And that basically means I've got a son called Damon Manderley. He's got a wife. He's got two children. Duncan Manderley and Mylon Manderley. Lovely names. Absolute cracking pair of kids. Uh, and he has no land that is his own. He, of course, will inherit White Harbour when I die. 
Actually, in my apologies, he won't. Yes, he will. He'll inherit White Harbor when I die. But at the moment, he has no castles for his own. So if you had a bigger realm with a couple of spare castles, you can actually give them to your kid. But again, don't worry about that. That's more advanced gameplay for an another tutorial. This is just a basic one to get you guys started, okay? So these are actually my children. So this is me, and this is my children. These are the people I've come from, who are all obviously dead. These are my children, and these are my brothers and sisters. So two of those are dead, and Walter Mandley, who is my brother, is alive. He's a bit younger than me, and he is not married at the moment. So for so another example of showing you how to marry, I'm going to marry him off. Okay, so I'm going to click the Arrange Marriage button. And again, I've got these little blue flags, look, that show me I'm getting alliances with people. So I'm going to have a little look, see if I can get um, a Northman alliance, because it's more... So that we can. Oh, she's a six-year-old. We don't know why we're doing that. Um, okay, so we're going to go for a reach one then instead. Uh, so the Osgreys. So we're going to marry into this lady here, the Osgreys. So we're going right-click on her. Should come up arrange marriage for you straight away. Now we do is go down and click send. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're going to actually now do is press to start our game. Okay. So all we need to do for that is unpause. And there we go. And the game's beginning and you see the dates clicking on and uh yeah the game starts so we go back to factions you can see uh the crown loyalists now has members okay so it's got a strength of 8209 men 11000 now 70 percent of our liege lords men that is so eventually everybody should join this and i've just had the exception from lord rodwell of the dreadfort that we're going to get married to june or whatever her name is so now you can see I'm actually married to her. So we start to get these pop-ups now that come on game. Um, this is basically how the game's played through events like this. So this is Lord Willem Mandley and Lady Janae Bolton have gotten married and it is customary for a dowry, which means a money sum to be paid to the groom's house. So I get the uh, options now of asking no people respect wealth as if like I'm the wealthiest guy in the world, I don't need your money. Or I could say, yeah, it's everyone cons concerned and get some more money. And I'm an absolute cheapskate, so everyone's concerned. And in a bit, that will bring me in some more money. My lord, Lord Rod will have sent the custom out in gold and silver for the bride's dowry, and now the ceremony can take place. So he's given me 50 gold, basically, and that's definitely worth it. Yeah, so this is basically the game, right? If you get yourselves to this point, you'll be able to play quite easily and comfortably now knowing what the menus do and are reacting to events. And it's fun to just play it without learning too much because as soon as you're actually in game, things happen and you, it's easy to react to them. So this is All Hail His Grace, King Torren of uh, House Stark, King of the North, King of Winter and First Man, Lord of Winterfell and Protector of the Realm. So I'm gonna chant the King in the North, the King in the North like I'm absolutely crazy by. So a thousand years ago, the Mandalas lived at the banks of the mighty river Manda, which is basically this river here in the Reach, but they were driven away by House Gardener, the house that then looked after the Reach. We fled north and were welcomed by the Starks of Winterfell as their own bannermen. So this used to be called the Wolf's Den, and the Starks owned it, and but they gave it to the Mandalays, and the Mandalays built the city of White Harbor on it, a debt that can never be repaid. So now we look, just the last thing I wanna show you today, guys, is opinions, okay? So if I click King Stark, I see the eight here, that is his opinion of me, right? So, he's, so you'll see, if I hover over it with my mouse, the reasons why that's his opinion of me, okay? Now don't worry about them too much, but you can work out what they are from yourself, really. Um, yeah, basically, guys, that's the end of this tutorial for today. If you need any more help with any more elements of the game, or you'd like me to do a little video running through what traits are, maybe, or things like that, let me know and I will do it for you. As always, please, uh, we do this more for fun than anything, but it's nice to have people subscribe and actually share and like our videos and stuff, so especially comments as well. We like to interact with our um, with our audience. So if you could just like us, maybe invite a few friends to, to view us, subscribe and just give us a comment. Just let us know we're doing the right thing. If we're not, give us a dislike and tell us why we're not doing the right thing and we'll do our best to change it for you guys. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm Carl from Order 66. Peace!